Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome. Um, yeah, I'm Carlos. I'm a software engineer at Red Hat. Um, I work at the uh, storage team at Red Hat, more specifically in the Manila team. And today I'm joined by my fellow Red Hatter, Gautam Pacharavi. Uh, we both work in the same team and uh, we uh, maintain the OpenStack Manila, as I said. Um, and today we wanted to talk about uh, natively scalable CFS, NFS gateways with OpenStack Manila and a couple of things we have been implementing uh, over the course of the uh, these past months and releases uh, in OpenStack. So um, this is our agenda So uh, uh, for this talk. So first, um, about OpenStack Manila, uh, you at this point, you might, have, might have know we have uh, had a couple of mentions to Manila over the course of the day, and uh, it can offer you self-service POSIX uh, compliant shared file systems, uh, which are elastic and secure. Elastic because you can grow and shrink them uh, at any time, and it should be instantaneous, and secure because you can control the access uh, to whomever uh, you can control who can write data you, know, you can control who can only read and do all of uh, sorts of like ACL rules. Um, in addition, Manila also provides like levels of multi-tenancy and service guarantees. So, like cloud, uh, cloud administrators, they're able to control quotas, uh, share types, and um, user control. Uh, it supports a variety of protocols as well, like NFS, CIFS, CFS, and uh, yeah. Uh, Besides all of these functionalities we already know uh, about the uh, NAS shared file systems, uh, Manila also lets the users have lots of self-service features and lots of things you can do to interact with your shared file uh, systems. So yeah, uh, pretty complete and we have a lot of uh, use cases and very large deployments using Manila. So here are, uh, uh, kind of an overview of uh, results of surveys we conducted with both uh, upstream uh, for OpenStack and Ceph communities. So uh, there are some large deployments using Manila with CephFS for OpenStack. Uh, the last conducted survey was 2022, and we got about 84 responses that recorded the usage of OpenStack Manila. Um, Almost like 42% of those were already using Manila for production, and uh, f there were there was kind of 22% of those people you know, of those deployments uh, still in the testing phase that they were trying to phase out to production. Um, yeah, and CFFS uh, being it consumed directly via uh, or through NFS, it uh, was the preferred solution to uh, in Manila, as you can see. So that blue thing, like in the right uh, hand side graph, it's the usage of CFFS. Um, it's uh, that second survey was like 68 responses, and uh, it's basically uh, CFFS was pretty much dominant um, in the usage of Manila. So uh, let's go around on uh, how we do uh, native CFFS and CFFS through NFS in Manila. So for native CFFS, it's pretty much like uh, CFFS volumes served as Manila shares. So um, the way we usually do the deployment or the way people usually would do that is we would have a storage provider network that extends the Ceph public network to the VM. So the VMs would be connected to the storage network and also to the uh, public network. And uh, with that, uh, the VMs would be able to mount the shares and the clients would be able to uh, consume the data. So it could be the VMs, could be containers, uh, you name it. Uh, the, CFF, the CFFS driver, uh, it works well in an environment with uh, trusted end users on a uh, private cloud. Uh, yeah, I think that there are a couple more things. Uh, yeah. So for CFFS via NFS, uh, we can also, CFFS can also be served behind an NFS gateway, in this case, um, use NFS Ganesha, um, a user space NFS server. So um, 
it, it's basically like the same concept. We are serving, uh, letting the users create sub-volumes uh, in CFFS, and we are letting them like mount it and consume it. And uh, there is uh, how do we do like uh, though how do we control uh, the high availability or, or everything like that for the uh, NFS servers? Well, uh, that's basically how we do that. So. Um, we would uh, have pacemaker uh, controlling like the, the or having access and managing the instances we have for uh, NFS Ganesha. So in this case, for example, we have a, an example of like three Ganesha instances and pacemaker would have like a virtual IP. So, um, and there would be, uh, it would work in, a, in an active passive mode. So uh, there would be one instance active and uh, whenever, uh, like, if it went down, then pacemaker would elect the next one, and it would like try to make that the active one, and if it, it would go on and on and on. Um, and then, yeah, uh, the clients would be consuming that. Uh, it should be uh, something that uh, the pacemaker is already doing. So uh, now over to the uh, to Gotham to talk about some changes we're doing. Thank you. Uh, as you can see, there are quite a lot of uh, limitations, as you can tell already. So if you're familiar with using CephFS, you expect a certain degree of performance from CephFS. Um, but layering an NFS gateway in front of uh, CephFS, you, you know you're going to uh, actually suffer a loss of performance. And besides, the loss of performance is also about the scale, right? So you would be able to serve a lot more clients if you were, uh, if you were accessing CephFS directly as opposed to putting them all behind uh, maybe one or a few of these NFS gateways. Um, so the performance hit is something uh, that is, is, is a harder problem to solve, but the, the scale uh, hit was something that was, uh, that was an easier achievable problem that we were able to work with with the Ceph, uh, the, the Ceph, Ceph community uh, in a whole really, the CephFS uh, folks folks who work on Cephadim uh, and also the NFS Ganesha communities. So there's work that happened in the last couple of uh, cycles that I'd like to show you what, what's changing. Um, in this model, uh, as, and this is OpenStack hidden in this picture behind, but those are OpenStack users that are consuming NFS shares connected through Pacemaker which is controlling uh, the uptime and the availability of the NFS server. And a bunch of these users are all going through the same, uh, you know, the NFS server. That's how you would picture this. And uh, to orchestrate the NFS exports, uh, all of this is done automatically with the help of CephFS driver in Manila. So the driver is capable of creating the access rules that are required. So if you are an end user, you would tell uh, Manila what is the client that's going to end up mounting your uh, CephFS volume, what's the IP address, et cetera. And we, uh, as in the, the Manila driver, would, uh, would go create an export record for you in the NFS parlance. And there is stuff happening in the background uh, such that the NFS server can recover from any sort of outages by preserving these exports, not uh, ephemerally or uh, using any other storage, I mean, there, there is a storage system behind this, so why not just use uh, Ceph objects to persist those exports? So all of that is happening in the background and you don't need to worry about it, but that's how the Ganesha recovery is happening every time Pacemaker detects that there's a failure in one of these nodes. Uh, it's able to bring up another NFS uh, server elsewhere and consume those exports because those exports are, are configured on Rados also. And all of this is being done via the Manila driver hidden uh, away from what the users uh, are known to. And, and users have a familiar interface saying, I have my share, I, I have my IP address, give me access, that's it. As I told you, uh, one of the things is the whole aspect that this doesn't scale very well. The other thing is the aspect that um, Manila and Ganesha need to be in sync. And in order to send uh, a export configuration to Ganesha, uh, we would use uh, Ganesha's Dbus API, and that kind of started putting us in, into a, uh, you know, a locked architecture of sorts. So if you were to run this in the best way possible, you would want the NFS server and the Manila share manager process to coexist. 
so that they could share a dbus socket. Because if you're trying to do anything else, like dbus over SSH or something, things would start getting weird uh, pretty soon and not, as, not, a, not be as reliable. And um, I'm an engineer. I'm used to telling you that you know, this is a bad solution. But this works very well in, in like a lot of production scenarios, by the way. <laughs> it, it, it is being used at scale as well. Uh, but I would like for the scale to be uh, be be better as, as other users would. right? And that's why we were working on the next approach, which is uh, clustering Ganesha. So Ganesha is already, uh, NFS Ganesha is pretty old at this point, uh, and it's been widely used. And a lot of the storage solutions that we're interfacing with NFS Ganesha have been using it in a clustered manner. Uh, Ceph was, uh, wasn't, or rather there were users in the wild, probably you, you noticed them on the Ceph users list that were trying to do this, but not, not a lot of first party things going on. Um, not a lot of uh, you know, community supported architectures. And that's what's changing. So with, uh, I, I, will, I will talk to Ceph Adam, uh, because that's what we've been using mostly in OpenStack deployments. Uh, that Red Hat supports, but a very equivalent thing is happening with ODF as well, and you may be aware of it. So uh, what's happening here is Ceph Adam today is able to create a uh, NFS service for you, and it is able to scale the NFS service, and you can have active active instances directly living as Ceph daemons would on your Ceph cluster. And it's able to put these active active instances of, of the NFS server behind a, uh, a well-known ingress sort of service. It is called the Ceph ingress service. What the Ceph ingress service is, is a combination of HA proxy and keep alive D. So if you're scaling your uh, NFS service, like this diagram shows you, into three servers that are active, 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 so all of these three servers are presumably on different Ceph nodes. And there is an HA proxy and a keep alive D that's running in front of it. And the HA proxy is managing the load balancing aspect so that you can add more scale to these NFS requests. And keep alive D is moving the WIP as uh, it detects any failures. So one other aspect to this is if you're used to Manila, you're used to client restrictions through IP addresses. So as I told you, a client would come into Manila and say, here's, uh, I mean, here's my share. Give me access to this particular VM and this particular IP address. Now, off the bat, this wouldn't work because we are terminating all the connections at this ingress service. And what Ganesha is seeing is traffic coming from the ingress. So uh, the NFS. Uh, Ganesha folks have now implemented uh, support for a proxy protocol, uh, which is kind of confusing to say, HA proxy proxy protocol. Uh, but what it's essentially doing is it's able to pass the source IP address in a header that Ganesha can parse and understand that traffic is coming through uh, this ingress, but it is meant for a client who ha which has a different IP address. And so your client restrictions saying this is the one I need, to, uh, I need to have access would actually work because you're looking at the source IP address in the header rather than what's coming uh, as part of the ingress traffic. So that's uh, a huge number of small things that I had to change to get that happening. And uh, with, the, with, this, with the scale, like with any other Ceph daemon, you're able to scale it up and scale it down. And as you're scaling it up and down, uh, we are using primitives within NFS Ganesha, within the NFS protocol, as well as uh, mechanisms of persisting the recovery uh, pieces of this onto RGW, uh, so that uh, onto Ceph objects, that we are able to recover the state, the uh, the locks, the NFS uh, locks, and so on. So I can go into way more, way more detail. Maybe that's not too interesting as to how uh, you know, these Ganesha servers recover from failures and stuff like that. But um, maybe that's for another talk. For now, though, uh, I, would, uh, I mean, all of this uh, innovation happened in like the Ceph Reef release that is yet to, uh, to be released. And it's not complete yet. Uh, we're still testing this stuff. And we know there are some, some corner cases and some bugs. 
but we, we are targeting for uh, this to be available in the Ceph release, uh, Ceph Reef release. Uh, and as far as NFS Kanesha goes, uh, it's available with NFS Kanesha v version 5, uh, which shipped like a couple of months ago. Uh, and it's meant to be used with the Ceph Reef release to be able to use client restrictions with this HA proxy, uh, proxy protocol enabled and, and so on. So if you're looking at this today and you get your hands on Reef, uh, you should be able to do SF NFS cluster create like this and specify where you want your NFS cluster to be uh, created, provide an, a virtual IP address that you would want to use as the front end and specify the ingress mode to be HA proxy protocol. Uh, you can look at the help for this uh, command. It, it, uh, Ceph Adam is capable of you know, building the moon for you. Uh, so there are a lot more other options that are there. This is how we would have our users use this and set up their NFS solution. And what this does is it creates this sort of a spec. Uh, and then you can see the spec has some things about placement, where to put things, put things, how many of these services to run, what is the front end, what is the back end, and all of that stuff. Usually you don't need to worry about it unless you're debugging or troubleshooting something. All right. So time for a demo, if I can get the... And So here, we're just logging into the Ceph cluster and printing out the version. As I was telling you, this is the latest, greatest uh, thing. So we built this demo yesterday, and this is using the, um, the RC that Josh was telling you shipped like last week, I think. And oh, let me check, let me check. Probably not unless I can do that. Nope, it's adjusting to the, <laughs> okay. I'm sorry, I can't, I guess. It does think it's at 300. <laughs> huh? Download it, oh yeah. See if I can quickly do that. Oh, it's, an HTML. it's a HTML. <laughs> Sorry about that. Demo fails, even if we record. <laughs> and now I can't get out of this. Oh, yeah, okay. It's hidden. All right. You got a screen. I'm sorry. <laughs> but I will try to make this available, like give you the slides so you can actually click through this. And um, probably even try this. So uh, that's what my Cephorc ls gives me. Uh, I can read it out for you. It has an ingress.nfs.cephfs, which has a front-end IP and a back-end uh, you know, section as well. So it's front-ending uh, with that IP address and port 2049. So it's pretending to be the NFS server, but it's actually the HA proxy service. And there's the there's an NFS service that is uh, running on that uh, on that host with the uh, thing. It's uh, serving NFS on 1249. Doesn't matter because uh, all we all we're pretending is the f client doesn't need to use a special port. They're familiar with their clients are configured to use 2049, so they can continue to use NFS the standard way. All right. And I'm also going to show you some, uh, some part of the thing, because in, in an earlier presentation, I said triple O is going away or something like that, and that usually causes panic. Um, so we're, the Red Hat installer is changing, and it's going to start deploying the OpenStack control plane on, on uh, OpenShift and Kubernetes. So that's what this looks like. So I'm running the uh, Marilla service with that new installer. And I've configured two backends, one that serves CephFS over NFS, and another that serves CephFS over CephFS, but it's talking to the same Ceph cluster. A very common use case with Manila users. And that's what the spec file looks like. Um, 
as I'm looking at the backend configuration, that's just the container image of the service that I'm using. The share backend information looks very familiar for folks that have probably configured CephFS with Manila. Uh, one useful thing over there is that it's now looking at a CephFS NFS cluster ID. I, I'm sorry, I confusingly called it CephFS. Everything, we just name it CephFS. So you can name it what you want, but it's basically a way that the backend driver is identifying the NFS cluster within the Ceph cluster. So it knows which NFS cluster you're talking about. And on my other backend, I'm consuming native CephFS. Simpler configuration, I'm just serving the uh, native CephFS protocol. So there are two Manila share, pro, uh, share manager services that will eventually come up, is what the idea is. And this is the demo environment a little bit. So we're distributing the Ceph secrets to, this, to, to Manila so that it's able to access the Ceph cluster. And we're also going to be using those two bare metal nodes as clients in the end. Guess I didn't speed up this part. Um, so we're just showing you that that's usually what you would have seen is configured within Manila Share to access the Ceph cluster. You need a keyring, you need a Ceph.conf. That's the Manila services that have come up. And that's the pool informa pool's information that Manila knows about. And I'm going to create a share type uh, to be able to use Ceph. I also threw in a NetApp over there um, if, if people use, use it together. But otherwise, I'm just creating a share, a, a regular process. So what that's going to give you is it's going to create a CephFS subvolume and export that over NFS. And you'll be able to gra grab the export location. And the IP address over there should be familiar because that's the front end IP of the HA proxy service that we have deployed, the Ceph ingress service. So we give access to the, a, a VM that we know. And we go ahead and try to mount it and write some data. Just regular stuff. And let's just go ahead and list the, list the files. Everything looks great. Um, so this is just a regular workflow of the client restrictions working as expected with, even if you're talking to the HA proxy service, you're actually getting NFS out of it. And if you're trying to mount this on, an, on another VM which has no access, and that's the user experience you're gonna get, which is that you don't have access to it. We don't know what that file or directory is. So let's go ahead and give access, and we're gonna be able to mount it as well. So this is the part that would not work without the HA proxy, proxy protocol implementation that the NFS uh, Ganesha folks had to work on. So uh, we believe for sure that this, uh, these primitives that are implemented are way more extensible and are usable even outside of the OpenStack Mandala context. Uh, so this is a big change for Ceph and for NFS Ganesha. And we expect like, you know, uh, as Federico was telling you, if, I mean, IBM is looking to pro productize NFS piece. So I think this is one of the foundational pieces for that and things. So I'm glad we are able to use uh, and reuse these things. Uh, so again, all credit to the Ceph team and the NFS Kanesha team for having figured all this out, though. All right. So uh, that's it for my uh, demo. Let me get back to my slides if I can without. There you go. All right. Uh, so you'll see more of this and, and some documentation written around this pretty soon. Everything is bleeding edge. So what do we plan to do to migrate people? Because we're also in the business of supporting people that have been using uh, a solution for quite a while and pretty successfully. So, so one of the problems we have and would, would be an amazing ask for the Ceph community would be there is no easy way to say Ceph Adam adopt my NFS uh, server. It doesn't exist. Um, and so we'd have to invent you know, different strategies of how we'd have to move our NFS clients over. 
So one thing that we are thinking of with the Red Hat OpenStack pro uh, product is allow for an extended decommissioning period for the existing NFS uh, server. And what this would do is allow uh, a cloud service provider perhaps or an operator to tell their clients that eventually this NFS server will be shut down a week, 10 days, whatever, like you know, your, your own logic to that, uh, even six months or whatever. So at the, at the time, I mean, by that time, please also, adopt, I mean, please start, you, you know, scaling down your workloads, changing your uh, stuff, consume your, the same data that you have is not getting deleted. It's just coming from a different place. So start consuming it from the new place. A standard deprecation that is probably used in, a standard deprecation approach that's probably used in most data centers for stuff like this. So how would we do that? Well, Manila will handle that part. So the Manila driver, when it starts up, and you tell it, hey, there's a new Ceph NFS cluster, you can say, this is where my old cluster was, and Manila will be able to uh, represent both export locations to, the, to its users and tell people which one's the preferred path. So if somebody is listing their exports of, uh, you know, uh, through Manila, they'll know what to mount and what not to, what's going away, basically. So it's sort of like hel helping that UX along with, alongside the operator's communication. Another thing that we are working on and we're, we're, we're still actively testing this, and it may be possible, is to be able to live migrate them uh, or even migrate the uh, NFS consumers with the mo minimal disruption, if anything. And what that, what that would involve is for us to cluster these NFS uh, services, the uh, NFS service that originated with Ceph Adam and the NFS service that in, if you're using OpenStack with Red Hat OpenStack, it is the pacemaker managed NFS service on your OpenStack controller nodes. So we'd be able to cluster them and then start tearing down the old NFS servers and do a WIP migration. And this is stuff that's still in the in flux. And the, one of the reasons we, we think this may not work in all situations is that you may not have the network flexibility for doing this sort of a WIP migration. So what we're essentially doing is moving the NFS service from OpenStack to Ceph. So we are not sure if your NFS network, your pre-existing NFS network, is that easily uh, accessible to the Ceph cluster because you had, you had you had architected your network in a different way and so on. So you will have access to the previous solution, but this is something that we are interested to attempt because we have customers that are never going to un unmount their uh, NFS shares and remount it because you're trying to move move them uh, off of their old NFS server and so on. So we'll see if this works. Maybe we'll update you in the next, uh, in, a, in a different opportunity. But if you're looking at what that solution would look like, that's what this, uh, this slide's providing. So one other uh, thing that I should have mentioned is that when you're moving off this NFS servers, this is also stuff that we did in the Manila driver. So you don't need to do anything of moving exports and all of that stuff. Just tell Manila where the new NFS cluster is, and this FFS driver will take care of replaying all the exports to this new place, and uh, you know mirroring all of that and, and things like that. So that's a, that's a UX we expect to work, um, and we'll be testing that thoroughly. Awesome. Uh, that's that's actually all I had, and I think we have a couple of minutes for questions. Thank you. No questions. Amazing. <laughs> so, oh, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, uh, oh, I see. Okay. I think I think the Ceph community certainly has done more perf perf scale tests uh, that might involve you. <laughs> sorry, uh, than than we have uh, because placing Manila in the picture is not interesting, right? Because Manila is mostly doing all the management operations. So it's mostly Ceph that's, uh, you know, depending on wh how, where you're running it, how you're running it, conf how you're tuning it, that might impact the performance. What we've done a little bit is comparing this usual canned rel, RHEL OSP, Red Hat OSP deployment, try to, try to uh, stress test the control plane 
try to break the performance a little bit that way or even try to compare and and see whether we're seeing the same patterns that probably the Ceph folks are, which is how does native CephFS compare with NFS, compare that with bare metal versus uh, container workloads versus uh, VM workloads and so on, and try to find out if there are, uh, you know, improvements that we can su suggest and things in the network path and things like that. Yeah. But no, we have not compared Ceph with vendor storage or something like that in that regard. Yeah, no problem. Yeah. Is fencing in use? Yeah, sure. Uh, so is, f is fencing in use in our current solution is one uh, thing I could talk to, which is that we are using Pacemaker and we do test fencing. So you, if, you want, if you were to try to do a planned failover, uh, decommission a node, et cetera, the, uh, you, you could even actually test it with, uh, with, with initiating a fencing operation. That's how we are queuing the product itself. Um, but yes, uh, that's another uh, place make a primitive, primitive that we are using, that in case a node failure is detected, it is actually fenced off. It's not allowed to re rejoin the cluster automatically and stuff like that. All right. Uh, thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.